So now what I'm gonna do is actually start over on these models. I really don't like what I did here. So in order for me to start over, I can delete all the files in the migrations folder and just leave init in there, that's fine. Also delete PyCache if you have it there. Um, and then also I'm gonna delete my SQLite database. Okay, so back into my models, I wanna change these fields to something different. What I just did was something you'll do often while you're learning. Right? You'll delete those migrations and then you'll delete that database. Sure, you might lose some data, but that's no big deal. That's part of the learning process um, and that's actually really, really important to do. So with these fields, I wanna transition them into being something more realistic to what they are. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the reference in the, the docs themselves. So djangoproject.com, look for the model fields field types. Um, you can just do a quick Google search for this and you'll see the reference for all the different field types. And what we actually used so far was just one of them. As you see, I'm scrolling, there's a lot of them. So I used just this text field. That's one of the very many that we have in here. So let's go ahead and use a few different ones. First of all, the title field should be limited to how long it is. So I'm gonna change it to a char field and I'll add in something called max length, and I'll make it at most 120 characters. That's still a fairly long title, but that's what I want it to be. And when you use a char field, you have to use max length. So max length equals to required. Well, um, I'm gonna leave it out for just a moment and save it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and try and run my migrations, right? So I'll go python manage.py make migrations. I get an error. It says char fields must define a max length attribute. I just mentioned that was required, but luckily Django will tell us if something's required. Once I save that, some of my errors go away, right? Description, text field, that actually makes sense. But what if our product, we don't necessarily want to have a description? Then I can say blank equals to true, and I can also say null equals to true. I'll explain these the differences between those two in just a moment. Uh, price, what should our price field be? Well, should it be a text field or should it be, well, let's see, if there's a decimal field, hey, what do you know? There's a decimal field and a float field. I'm gonna stick with decimal field, and this is where the docs come in and make things a lot easier for us. This will show us what's required, okay? So um, what's in here is required. So these two things are required right here, whereas if we go down a little bit, it says duration field. We're not gonna use that, but there's nothing in there that's required. Uh, we've got email field that has a requirement, but it's already in there, it's already built in. So this will take some time getting used to, but that's essentially what's going on with the docs, right? But it also shows you inside of the docs that it has those required arguments. In other words, let's go back in here and change this just to decimal field. Let's save it. I save it. It's gonna run these errors, right? It shows me these errors. It tells me exactly what it is. Um, but so does the docs, right? So the docs says max digits and decimal places. So let's go ahead and add those. For a product, decimal places is gonna be two. Like, you know, it's not gonna be three decimal places. You don't have three decimal places of sense. And then max digits, as in the number of digits this will allow, like a thousand digits is actually a lot for a decimal number, right? So just do that in your mat in your head. What's 10,000 digits in dollars? That's that's a lot, right? Um, cool, so I now have a little bit more robust fields. Summary, I can leave it as a text field as well. Uh, maybe I want summary to be in there by default. Maybe I want it for, to for sure be in there, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that default. I'll explain the default thing in just a moment, um, most likely in the next video, but I will explain what's going on with that here shortly. Okay, so I save this and now what I need to do is actually run my migrations again. Remember, every time you change models.py, you have to run python manage.py make migrations, and then python manage.py migrate. Now, I deleted the database, so that also means that I need to run create super user all over again, and I'm gonna leave it in as CFE, type in that password of learn code, and there we go. My server is still running. Through all of that, my server is still running. I refresh in here on the Django admin. I still have to go back in, log in, 
and I see that I actually don't have any products anymore, but if I go to add a product, the layout of it has already changed. The title can't be some long title. I can say new product and description. I can write stuff if I wanted to. Price has now a number item in here. So I can actually write numbers, $29.99, and I can add a summary, some new summary, exclamation mark. I hit save, what do you know? Not a whole lot different. Okay, with that in mind, let's just see it in the shell too. So Python manage.py shell, and we'll just go ahead and do from products.models import product. This is the exact same thing. It's just going to the location as to where that product is. We hit enter product.objects.create title equals to newer title uh, price. Now we can put actual a decimal number in here, no string. So 239.99 and then summary. Uh, now a string awesome sauce is awesome. We hit enter. It looks like it created it, no problems. We go back into our products uh, in the admin, still running. We see that we have a new product in here. All of that stuff was saved. So it's bringing those two things into conjunction with each other. Um, so we're already starting to save stuff. We already hopefully see how easy it is to map data in Django. Um, there's definitely a lot more stuff that we can go over here and we will. So make sure you subscribe to get everything. We'll see you next time.